Masking can be really confusing. Recently, Lightroom released a new masking feature that allows you to easily and accurately mask with one click of a button, but is it actually better than Photoshop? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use that new feature in Lightroom, and then I'll put it to the test. Is it as accurate and good as what you can do in Photoshop? That coming up. My name is David Johnson, and on this channel, I help you with those problems and show you how to improve your photography using features like this. Let's jump right into how this tool actually works. So when you're in Lightroom, you just go to the develop module here, and the masking feature is this little circle with dashed outlines. So you click masking, and the new feature allows you to select a subject, a sky, or a background. Now, background is really reserved for those portrait shots. Since I'm doing landscape photography here, I'm really just focused on the subject and the sky. And we can also select objects in this, which is a new tool as well. Now, how this works is it's actually going to select out different parts of the photo using artificial intelligence. I'll show you how that works here. So if I select the sky, I'm just gonna click on sky and it's going to select out this sky and it shows me with this little landscape icon that the sky is selected. Now it highlights this in red if you click the show overlay option. You can deselect that if you want to as well, but I like to have it selected just to see how well it's actually selected out the sky and what I'm trying to do here. Now let's zoom in on this and see how accurate it actually is. So I'll just zoom in on this part of the photo and we can see that it does a pretty good job here. It may have bled into the actual mountain ridge just a little bit, but using the artificial intelligence, it's actually gone in and found different pixel tones, luminance values, and that gets into all these mathematics. But what you need to know is using this artificial intelligence to find differing colors and hard lines to decipher what's the sky and what's not. So let's try a different selection here. I'm just gonna hit Control or Command Z to undo that selection. And I'm gonna select subject. Let's see how well it does selecting out some of the mountains for us. I've had some issues with the subject and I'll show you how to work around that if it happens in this photo. So like I said, no subject detected. That can happen sometimes with landscapes because you don't have a distinct subject. Maybe it'll find a tree or a mountain ridge, but it doesn't always do the best job of finding an actual subject. Again, with portrait photography, I think it would do a lot better job of finding an actual person in the frame. So I'm just gonna hit OK, and what I'm gonna do instead is select this option that says Objects. When I select that, I get this circle and crosshairs that comes up, and I'm gonna have this Select Show Overlay because I want to know exactly where I'm painting with this object selection in the photo. Now I'm just gonna select out this bottom mountain ridge here, and I'm just gonna click and paint this red selector down in the bottom of the photo. So when I do that, you can see it says detecting on the bottom, and that's just saying, hey, we're running artificial intelligence in the background to help select out exactly what you've said that you want to select in this. Now what it's done here is it's actually selected out the darkest mountain ridge down at the bottom. So I can go to actually uh, create a new mask, select an object, and let's see this time if this actually works. So I'm going to not select this bottom mountain ridge. I'm just gonna do this section that's the next color tone up, and we'll see how well that selects out. So it's done a pretty good job. It's eliminated that first selection, this first mask here, and it's actually selected out this tone of these mountains right here. So we have mask one here, and mask two right here. So we have two different selections, two different color tones. Let's zoom in and see how accurate this is actually working. We can go down here. You can see obviously trees are very hard to select and mask out, but it's done a pretty good job of masking these. Now, if I have this mask, let's say I want to brighten this section. If I brighten this, let's just bring the exposure up you can see that that bleeding actually affects some of these hazy outline parts of that selection. So while you do have selection here, 
what you're getting is not a exact accurate selection that you can make. Now you can go in and fine tune this and take hours to do that, but we're looking for one click. Where this is really working great is with the sky and with hard edges of color tones here. Now in just a second, I'm gonna show you this versus a selection that you can make in Photoshop to see which is more accurate and which is better for your photography and some of my thoughts on which one you should use. I wanna ask you the question of the day though. Let me know in the comments, are you using selections and masking in Lightroom or are you doing so in Photoshop. Again, let me know in the comment section. Like this video if you're getting value out of it and subscribe to the channel. Let's head over to Photoshop and edit and select out this exact same photo so we can compare and see which one performs better. So I'm just gonna right click, go to edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop, and that's going to open this exact photo in Photoshop and we can start that comparison. Now that we're over in Photoshop, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna go to select, I'm gonna select sky and we'll see how well that selects out this sky using Photoshop's artificial intelligence feature here. So the selection looks a little bit different just because this is in Photoshop, but these selecting areas are called dancing ants and we can just zoom in here on how well that has selected these areas out all the way to the tiniest pixels. And you can tell it's gotten extremely close. So this is probably a slightly more accurate than the Lightroom selection, but also the Lightroom selection was pretty good for the sky. Let's look at the subject and these mountain ridges that we can select out for accuracy. I'm gonna hit Control or Command D to deselect that sky, and then I'm gonna to go to Select, Subject, and you remember Subject, Lightroom had a very hard time finding an actual subject. Looks like we have the same objection in Photoshop as well. So that's an equal comparison there. Let's look at how to select this out using our actual selecting tools. Now in Photoshop, there are multiple different selecting tools that we could spend hours talking about. Since we're comparing the object selection that we did in Lightroom as well, I'm gonna compare that exact feature. So I'm gonna go to this little wand here. I'm gonna click and hold, and I'm gonna go to object selection tool and that's gonna bring up this tool. So when it comes up, it's just a little crosshairs and a square, and what's cool about this tool is no matter where you hover, it's going to show you a selection based on where you're actually hovering over, and this again does it with artificial intelligence. It's saying, hey, this could be a great selection. Let's just select this bottom mountain layer since that's the same thing we were doing in the other photo, and we can look at how good of a job this selects out. So. Here with the dancing ants, again, we'll zoom in on this selection down here and we can see, okay, it's done a pretty good job, probably a little bit more accurate than what Lightroom did, but we can see that it has done a pretty good job down here in selecting this out and we can see that those selections are there. It's probably a little bit more down in between those tree branches. So Photoshop has done a little bit better of a job accurately that we can see. So let's look at what effect this can have. So I'm gonna to go to layers. I'm just going to go to a curves adjustment layer for that selection. And I'm just going to adjust that and see how accurate that could actually be and then zoom in on those sections of the photo. So you see that it has done a good job selecting out this part, but it's also bled into other parts of the photo as well. But again, I think that this is slightly more accurate. Now these are not edits I would ever make. I just wanna show you for example's sake and see how good this actually is. Let's compare these two side by side so you can actually see them one next to the other. And what I wanna show you here is that either or you use, these are fast selection tools. So you can make much more accurate selection tools in Photoshop. These are just the one click tools you can use to select out. So I think they're pretty equal. So if you're looking for quick selection tools, one click, versus one click, I would say just stay in Lightroom and make all of your adjustments in there 
because it's so much easier to do that, saves you time and energy doing that as well. But if you're a perfectionist and you're like pro level photographer, you're printing really big prints, make those really refined selection and use those refined selection tools in Photoshop to edit your photos and get very precise results. If you wanna see some more tips on how you can use Lightroom, click or tap the card showing up on your screen right now, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.